In this talk, I'm going to present the Torch X-ray Vision Library. I'm going to present this library using the analogy of building a house. There's a lot of redundant work that researchers do for each project, especially in medical imaging. Torch X-ray Vision provides components to load datasets, extract features, and process images with pre-trained classifiers. The goals of this project are threefold. First, improving model evaluation by providing easy access to many diverse data sets. The second is providing building blocks for developing models, such as fine-tuning the, the provided pre-trained models, or integrating these pre-trained representations into larger tools. And finally, studying model failures and limitations, such as model interpretability or explainable AI, uh, out of distribution detection, or looking at the bias and fairness issues with the pre-trained models that are provided. The library has already been used by many projects, so I want to highlight a few. Here, the goal is to summarize radiology reports. Image features are extracted using a Tortrex revision pre-trained model and combined with a model applied to text to produce the summaries. Here, there was no need to train on many images because the pre-trained model was used. In this project, the goal is to predict ICU admissions. A pre-trained classifier is used to predict image features, and those features are used in a decision tree. Here, the pre-trained model allowed for an interpretable decision and also didn't require many images to train. This project aims to predict the trajectory of a pneumonia patients. The representations from pre-trained classifiers are used with a unit to plot the trajectory of patients. Here again, the model didn't require any, uh, many images to train. This is all possible because of these large public data sets that have made, been made available over the years. Using the library, these data sets can be loaded using standardized data loaders, which allow them to be swapped out in order to easily evaluate the same model across multiple data sets. Pre-trained autoencoders and classifiers provide feature representation trained on hundreds of thousands of images. Each classifier has a dot features function to expose the pre-classifier features. Pre-trained models can also be swapped out easily to perform baseline comparisons with state-of-the-art models. Shown here is how to load dense nets that were trained on multiple different datasets. This is useful for studying dataset bias. Baseline models from JF Healthcare, as well as the official Chexpert model, are also provided. All of these models take input images with the same normalization. The goal of this library is to make everything easy. Let's look at a high-level overview of the library. Here we can see the merged data set has combined the PadChest and NIH datasets. We can see the pathologies available in the dot pathologies field as well as the metadata about the samples in .csv, which is a pandas data frame. The pathology labels are provided in dot labels, which have the values 1 for true, 0 for false, and NAN for unknown. NAN is used so that your code will break instead of failing silently if it is not prepared for this unknown class. A sample that is taken from the dataset contains the image and labels. If pathology or semantic masks are available, they are provided as dictionary keys. Semantic masks are things like lungs that don't correspond to any pathology. For pre-trained models, there is a dot pathologies field, which indicates what the model is predicting. Here are UMAPs showing the representations over a set of images for the dense net and the autoencoder. They look pretty good, right? I also want to note that each classifier is calibrated. Without calibration, the optimal threshold to predict true versus false could be any threshold, such as 0.1. This would make a prediction of 0.3 a positive prediction. This is confusing, and we prefer 0.5 to be the decision boundary. The models are calibrated using their holdout sets so that a prediction of 0.5 is the operating point on the ROC curve. Thanks for listening. As you can see by this plot of our GitHub stars versus NumPy, we are on the same trajectory, so we must be doing something right. 
please work with us to share your models and data sets.